Hey guys, it's Brian here. The Rim to Rim Pack is now shipping. It's our day pack born below the rim and made for any day hike on earth. The front pockets are really the star. Now you can keep your snacks, phone, and essentials within easy reach without having to stop to take your pack off every time you need something. They are just game changers. Find out more and get free shipping now at brightangeloutfitters.com. Sales of the Rim to Rim Pack directly support this show and will ensure we keep doing it for a long time to come. At Bright Angel Outfitters, we do it all for the love of the canyon and and to help you have your best possible experience below the rim. Now, on to the show. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Special, and this is the Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show presented by Bright Angel Outfitters. All right, an important episode today on one of the canyon's killers and what we're trying to do to help keep us all safe. Hiking in direct sun. In the summer, or on those warmer than normal spring or fall days, to a lot of us, me included, there is nothing worse. Just the feeling of the sun beating down on you in the middle of such a difficult physical challenge as hiking the Grand Canyon is enough to suck every single bit of energy right out of you. And in some cases, it can even be enough to kill. There's a medical term for that direct sun exposure. It's called solar load. There are many ways to minimize its impact, but none better than figuring out ways to stay out of the sun altogether, which means hiking after dark or at least maximizing your time in the shade. Dr. Tom Myers has been a physician at the Grand Canyon Clinic for the last 34 years. Solar load is um, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon because when you're out in direct sunlight, especially when it's a really high air temperature, I mean, it feels heavy. I mean, to me, it feels like a chainmail tunic. It feels weighted. And so load is the perfect term for it in my mind. And anything you can do to help mitigate the solar load will help your body not ab absorb too much ultraviolet radiant heat, radiation, and, and heat up. And so things that can help that would be first is clothing. And you know, if you wear clothing, and they've learned this in the hot areas of the Middle East, you know, Sarah's, they, they, they cover up. They don't walk around in a you know, breech cloth. You know, they don't, they, they have their heads covered. They have their, their bodies covered and that can reduce some of the solar load. I believe it's like up, up to almost 20%. The other thing is if you were to um, uh, have, you know, if to, to help also keep the skin cool for a heavy solar load would be to uh, get yourself wet, have uh, clothing that is breathable. You know, you don't want, you want stuff that is, is permeable, that allows for evaporative cooling to, to get some of that, uh, dissipate, to transfer some of that heat from your, your skin, from your body, out, in, out into the air. And so um, solar load's a big deal, you know, and, uh, but, you know, it, it, there's so many things that play into that, you know. It's, it's, you know, like I said, wind temperature, air temperature, and then humidity is the worst, you know. I mean, a, a wet heat's far more dangerous than a dry heat. That's the good news about Arizona and Grand Canyon. It's a dry heat, and uh, you can deal with it by, you know, getting yourself wet and, and using evaporative cooling, you know, to assist you. And that's how you can survive Grand Canyon. It's really, really hot. You just stay wet, and you, you don't overdrink. You, you take that extra water, you pour it over your body, let it evaporate, let it, all that heat transfer out into the air, and you can actually enjoy uh, a, a really hot hike, uh, believe it or not, in Grand Canyon if you're constantly staying wet. But there's one remedy that even Dr. Meyer says tops them all. The biggest thing with solo load to eliminate it all is, is shade. You know, uh, deep shade, for example. I mean, especially in Grand Canyon, everybody knows it. Who's hiked in Grand Canyon? They, in the, when it's really hot and sunny, it's like, man, if you can duck in the shade for a little bit, it feels like heaven. <laughs> you know, and then the solar load is like, oh my God, you know, it's like, I feel like the weight off of my shoulders, like I took a pack off, you know? Yep, being a shade hunter in Grand Canyon is a noble pursuit, even to the extent that it can potentially save your life. Last October, I was in the middle of a two-day rim to rim to rim. I had just finished the South Kaibab, North Kaibab leg and was lying in my cabin at Grand Canyon Lodge wondering why I felt so awful, nauseous, and just generally beat up. I knew it was a very bad sign because, A, this was the last leg of my buildup to the one-day rim to rim to rim I was planning for November, just the next month, and B, because I would have to make my way back to the South Rim the very next day. It didn't take me too long to figure out what my problem had been. It was the heat. Yeah, it was early October, but as can happen far too often in Arizona summer, 
it was just lingering. The high at the bottom that day was in the 90s, and there was not a cloud in the sky. I just knew it was that long eight-mile stretch between Phantom and Manzanita that's almost completely exposed with little shade to be found that had done me in. So it got me thinking right then and there, is there technology that exists that can somehow track the shade? Because I was not keen to the idea of any direct sun the next day, whether it be through that long stretch at the bottom or worse for the climb up Bright Angel. Well, it didn't take me too long to find exactly what I was dreaming about, a web interface called Shade Map. I almost couldn't believe it when I started to play around and saw that I could zoom my way into the North Kaibab Trail and almost miraculously see exactly where and when I would have shade the next day. So now knowing that the shade would creep into that long stretch I was talking about at the bottom around 4 o'clock, I figured I'd drop in around 2, banking on shade at the bottom and then darkness on the way out. Outside of part of the way down North Kaibab, I would face no direct sun and then no sun at all for the hardest part of the hike. And it could not have worked out any better. Instead of rushing out before dawn, I slept in. I wandered around the North Rim and the lodge area for the rest of the morning. Then I had lunch. Then, and only then, did I make my way out to the trailhead. And finally, right around 2, and with a plan I was so looking forward to, down I went. And you know what? It could not have worked out any better. No sun whatsoever at the bottom. And because it was dark when the choice presented itself, I hung a left at the South Kaibab Junction and took the shorter route up South Kaibab, which I would never have done in the daylight hours with the sun and the heat. Now I was obsessed with the shade map. And it wasn't long after that I tracked down its developer, Ted Petrosky and asked him if it would be possible to make a Grand Canyon-specific version. I knew I wanted canyon hikers to be able to see their route, no matter what it is in the canyon. It's not just the corridor trails that we're working with here. And to be able to plan their hikes around having shade in the warmer months. I had a feeling this technology could help save lives at best and help folks have a more comfortable hike at the very least. Ted agreed, and we set out to create what is now the Grand Canyon Shade Tracker. Now, I spoke with Ted recently because I wanted to find out where the idea for this revolutionary technology came from, and it turns out its original intention was not for seeking out shade. The initial idea, uh, when I lived in Seattle, I used to work uh, and try to get out to the mountains on weekdays uh, for a little overnight adventure and then rush back home and you know, at like 5 a.m. to be at work on time. And I remember it was uh, fall in the Cascades and I went out just for a quick overnight and I hiked into this campsite. It was probably 5 p.m. and it was already in the dark. And it was a not in the dark, but in the shade. And it was a kind of a beautiful, uh, you know, late summer day. And um, once that sun was gone, it got pretty cold, and I remember sitting there uh, in my tent in my sleeping bag and thinking, "Man, I wish, I wish I would have known, you know, that this campsite would be shaded by that mountain nearby, and I would get zero sun, and I would have prepared in a in a totally different fashion." You know, I was thinking I was going to be basking in the sun for a couple hours and then head to bed, and instead, I think it was a pretty early night in the sleeping bag, uh, and that was back in 2010, long time ago. For the next decade, Ted's idea remained dormant until life began to change for him during the outset of the COVID era. I met my future wife. We just got married this year, Um, but we were early on in our relationship and I had moved in with her and I was kind of looking around for a project to work on. And, you know, I thought back to that experience and I thought, I think this data is now widely available and freely available uh, to make this project happen. At the time, 10 years ago, a lot of that data was owned by Google, maybe Apple, but a lot lot of the large mapping companies, it wasn't publicly available. Um, And now it was. So I took my web developing skills uh, and I kind of merged them into this uh, project. And I, the whole idea was to make an online version of a tool that was accessible to everybody. I I wanted this software to be web first, like web based, uh, so it could reach as many people as possible, not 
you know, no downloads, no app store. You just need a browser, uh, which everybody has on a phone these days. Um, and that's kind of how the, the current shade map was born. Today, it's used by gardeners, agriculturalists, and photographers, among many more. But its roots remain in the outdoors. My wife and I are huge outdoor junkies. Uh, we plan to come do and run the rim to rim. We just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, we you love trail running <laughs> for sure, and we'll be we'll be calling you up for some beta. Uh, I hope so. But we are uh, skiers, we are mountaineers, we are rock climbers, and uh, the personal angle at first was very much outdoor. So um, rock climbing in the sun can get quite hot, not just because of the sun, but that sun warms the rock, and you probably have this effect in the Grand Canyon. Um, an interesting fact is the highest recorded surface temperature is much, much higher than the highest ever recorded air temperature, which is kind of how we measure temperature. So uh, I think I think the world record, uh, or for a long time in Death Valley, they would say, you know, somewhere around 130 degrees uh, was kind of the highest temperature ever recorded. Actually, uh, kind of the rock surface temperature has been recorded uh, much higher, up to like 30 to 50 degrees higher than that. So if you're rock climbing, uh, you definitely want that rock to be in the shade or you want to know how much sun that rock has had or it's going to be too hot to touch at times. The shade angle as well, I think when we go out trail running, and this is very uh, pertinent to you in the Grand Canyon, we just... We just want to see how much sun are we going to experience on this route? You know, how much water, uh, how much uh, dehydration, how much, you know, heat exhaustion we will encounter. Like, is this a very sun exposed uh, part of the mountains or is this a relatively shaded area? And how early do we want to start? And at what times do we want to be where to take advantage of the shade to keep ourselves cool? All right, Ted, so what was your reaction when this crazy dude comes to you uh, a few months ago and says, hey, I want to use your technology and build it specifically for the Grand Canyon, one of the seven natural wonders of the world, this thing that people dream about hiking rim to rim or whatever their hike is. Um, but I thought that this could make people's lives and experiences better on their hikes because shade is so important in the Grand Canyon. What did you think when, uh, when this opportunity presented itself to you? And I called you and said, hey, can we make this happen specifically for the Grand Canyon? Excitement. Uh, I, I think uh, this technology was kind of birthed in the outdoors. Uh, and I think the, the, my favorite application is, is to map outdoors and trails. Uh, so I thought it was the perfect fit of what I always thought shade map would be, uh, is helping people find sun and shade in the outdoors. And I, I also dislike hot weather in the sun. And I thought this is exactly the type of thing I would use myself. And those are often the easiest things to build are the ones that solve a personal problem. Uh, and yeah, so definitely just excitement. And I thought, this is not, this is just going to be a fun project to work on because it's something like I will use uh, when we go down to run rim to rim. We'll definitely be looking at these trails and, and checking out the shading situation before we set out. How are the challenges that, uh, that were presented to you? Because, you know, I was pretty specific about the, what, what the vision for this was, and that was that I wanted to map out um, specifically as many trails and as many routes and as many uh, let's call them landmarks like the box or like devil's corkscrew, Ua point, um, Coconino overlook on the, on the North rim, just places that people know about and seek out on these trips and to be able to show them, Hey, I want to be able to show you exactly what the shade situation is going to be like in the box, um, in the middle of a June day, noon or two o'clock or whatever, whatever the time of day was, but how challenging was it to implement all the things that, you know, I was pretty much, Pretty much demanding of you, Ted. <laughs> There's a lot of demands, a lot of back and forth, but, <laughs> but a great artistic vision. Always have the vision. Grand Canyon hiker in mind. Always have the Grand Canyon hiker in mind first. I don't care what the demand is. <laughs> it was a great artistic vision the whole way, and I was happy to, to ride along uh, to meet all those needs. Um, you know, the, the shading technology, obviously, like I have been working on for a long time, but 
uh, a hiking a hiking map specifically I had not done before. So I, I think I learned a lot about uh, mapping trails uh, and GPX files and also points of interest uh, because I, how do I say this? I, 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 th <laughs> I think maps this are very... This guy, gosh yeah. dang it, this guy wants too much. <laughs> yeah. One more landmark, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think the one that was the toughest request uh, was when you wanted all the, as many landmarks visible at all Zoom levels. And that's actually, yeah. uh, was quite a tricky problem. I remember thinking about that one for a couple of days because... Uh, the way these web maps work is they progressively show you more and more data as you zoom in. Uh, so I knew how to do that, but to actually have so many things appear on the map uh, without you specifically going to that region and zooming in on it, uh, that was uh, an original problem I had not encountered before. So I was very happy uh, how that turned out and to email you when it when they were all finally visible. Uh, for the most part, there because uh, it felt like and I had no idea. <laughs> I, I had I had no idea there were these challenges because I would just say, "Hey, do please do this, please do that, please do this," and your response was always like, "Yeah, okay." And basically, uh, that's the the perfect working relationship that you want is somebody has a vision and they give it to someone else. And too often you'll hear, "Up, oh, can't be done." No, nope, we can't do that. That's I've never done that before. Instead, your attitude was, uh, "I know now." Your attitude was, "I'll figure it out." <laughs> and you know what? You did figure it out because it's everything. Every time I got a new version back from you, it was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. We've got the trails all lined out in orange. So if you put rim to rim from say South Kaibab to North Kaibab, the whole route comes up and it's, and it's in orange. So you can see it perfectly. And then you can see all those landmarks that we talked about um, along the way. I didn't know it was such a challenge, but I'm just here to tell you, Ted, it was worth it because this is going to, this is going to help so many people. I, I, I still remember the first email you sent me. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm super excited to build this with you. I think it's going to save lives. And I remember talking to my wife and, and I said, this guy is super excited and he really believes uh, in this project. And I think he's going to bring a lot of energy to this project. And I think that's <laughs> that's one thing my, my wife who's never met you and I really enjoy about you is just the kind of uh, the tone you come across in the emails on the podcast. I mean, you're just a high energy guy. And, <laughs> uh, you know, when you bring that type of energy and vision and things get done, <laughs> if you're, you, <laughs> I love it. you can rally the troops, you can, you know, you can rally the troops and, and get them to perform. So I was definitely some emails you sent, I thought this is going to be harder than others, but I always replied with, yeah, we can do it. Yeah, <laughs> it, might, can do. it might just be a day versus an hour, but, uh, we'll get, we'll get this, we'll get this shipped the way you envision it. We had to inflict you, infect you with a little Canyon craziness, uh, Ted. So I think that was, uh, uh, obviously helpful along the way, but now that it's done and it's just this beautiful interface. It's everything that I dreamed that it that it could be. And we're just entering the warmer months, so I feel like it's just now going to start to catch on and people are going to recognize what an incredible tool this is and something that you know you should use to plan every hike that you do in the canyon. Um, when, and I know the feedback you're going to get is, is incredible. And I just wonder how it makes you feel when you've created something like this. This all came from, you know, inside your mind that started 10 years ago uh, on a camping trip in the Cascades. And now you're helping people who are doing once in a lifetime bucket list hikes uh, in the Grand Canyon have a safer and, and better experience. I'm just curious how you feel now that this thing is, is done and ready and live for the world. Uh, how's it make you feel that you're, you're going to have that kind of an, an impact on people's hikes and people's lives ultimately? Wow. I, you know, I haven't even had time to think about it, but I think, uh, I overheat so easily and I think if I can save that frustration, I don't even know how to put it into words, but you know, when that, when that sun hits you, you're just like frustrated. You can sometimes get a short fuse. You could throw a fit, um, and hopefully just bring a more enjoyable experience to everybody in the Canyon. I think that makes me feel good because you're, you're coming to such an amazing place and you're going to see such beautiful things and you want to be in a state of mind where you're comfortable to take that in and you're not stressed about, oh no, you know, when am I going to find some shade? When am I going to be able to cool down? You know, I, 
where am I going? Where is this trail going to lead? And, and how hot am I going to be today? I, I just want all those kind of anxieties to be put aside before you start to descend into the canyon. So you can, uh, yeah, a little less uncertainty and a little bit more, you know, being in the moment and taking in the views and knowing you've pre-planned and you're ready for whatever is about to come your way. I know that you probably think that I'm prone to hyperbole a little bit with when I, when I, when I told you that it would save lives, but knowing that you haven't been in the Canyon yet, I'm going to tell you, there's nothing, there's no, no hyperbole uh, in that people die in the Canyon every single year. And the biggest reason for that is heat related emergencies, dehydration, heat stroke, you know, overheating cardiac situations brought on by heat. Um, and that happens because they're unprepared. They're, that happens because they're hiking through the box or in the long stretch from uh, the end of the box all the way to Manzanita when it's in direct sun and it's, it's exposed. And it's the middle of the summer because it's the only time they could be in the canyon because of work schedules, vacation schedules, whatever it is. They're not as lucky as someone like, like, like I am. Um, that I can hike in the in the cooler months and pick and choose when I'm in the canyon. For some people, this is the only chance they have to do it. Um, but that's when people die. It's the sun exposure, man. I always say the heat's one thing. The sun exposure on top of it when it's just beating down on you endlessly and you're doing this grueling physical activity that is one of the hardest things that most people will ever do in their lives. That's when people die. And I'm telling you, Ted, this technology, uh, if people use it and plan with it and and avoid the hottest, most sun exposed times of the day. Um, and they know that they're, that, that they're going to have shade if they just wait here a little bit longer, uh, and they've planned it out. It's going to save lives. There is no hyperbole in that. And I think that the Grand Canyon hiking community, whether they know it yet or not, because we're at the very beginning of this, uh, Grand Canyon shade tracker, I think the Grand Canyon hiking community owes you a debt of gratitude. Maybe this is not something that you set out uh, that you thought that this technology would uh, be used for, but it's a game changer. It's a life changer. It's a life saver. Um, and that's because, you know, you've brought this into the world. And I think that we all owe you a debt of gratitude for that. And that's my long way, Ted, of just saying, thank you. Thank you for what you've done, man. It's It's been a pleasure. I, I don't even know what to say. I I'm humbled and honored. I, I wanted to build shade map as, as a general tool. And I wasn't even sure what people would use it for. What could you do if you knew where the sun is going to be? What would you do if you knew where the shade was going to be? What, what would you do with that information? And I, I never would have <laughs> focused on the Grand Canyon. So I, I think, Brian, you definitely brought this project to life. And I was just happy I could share that technology. That is Ted Petrosky, the brains behind the Grand Canyon Shade Tracker. This is a tool for you. It is free of charge. It lives on our website, brightangeloutfitters.com. Please go have a look, play around with it, and be ready to be absolutely amazed. Say you're hiking uh, rim to rim, North Kaibab to Bright Angel on, let's say, October 6th. The heat is lingering, and you're worried about hiking up Bright Angel in direct sun. Well, the Shade Tracker will show you minute by minute where the shade will be. So say it's 1 p.m. when you get to Havasupai Gardens. You have four and a half miles to go, the hardest part of the hike, but you've used the shade tracker so you know Bright Angel is starting to heavily shade by 3, and by 3.30, it will be shaded the entire rest of the way. So you take a break at Havasupai Gardens. You stay there till about 3, and then off you go, knowing that as hard as the rest of the hike will be, Direct sun is no longer part of the equation. Again, this works for every trail in the Grand Canyon, every minute of every day of the year. The Grand Canyon Shade Tracker available exclusively at brightangeloutfitters.com. While you're there, you can also grab our free ebook, A Beginner's Guide to Rim to Rim, and also check out our library of information packed videos and even catch up on this podcast. It's all there, and it is all free at brightangeloutfitters.com. All right, happy feet will lead to happy hikes. That's Coach Arnie's philosophy as he talks about getting rid of plantar fasciitis in this week's training tip. Hey, guys, this is Coach Arnie with another Grand Canyon training tip of the week. And again, want to thank Brian for allowing me to share some uh, 
some wisdom and knowledge of the canyon uh, and my love for the canyon with you guys. So this week's tip as we continue to move up from the ground is about uh, eliminating plantar fasciitis, which I know a lot of individuals deal with, and at the same time, building on what we talked about before, we can achieve better foot mobility. And how do we do that? Well, I'm going to share with you my secret weapon. And here it is. It's a 20 to 30 degree uh, slanted box. Yeah, it's a it's a box that has a, mine has a 30 degree slant, but you can get them that are adjustable or you can create one that's 20. And you can either purchase one, they're all over the place now, or you can build your own. And if you want information on that, you can just message me uh, and I can send you that information as well. And here's the simple tip. The simple tip is this. You stand for two minutes on that box every single day. If you stand for two minutes with good posture, with your toes up, your heels down as, as much as you can get them down, I promise you that your plantar, plantar fasciitis will go away. Your foot mobility will get better because your ankle range will improve drastically. And it just flat out works. Just do it. Thank me later, okay? So listen, if you have any questions, please, you can um, contact me at painfreearney on Instagram or you can um, text or call me at 602-390-9144. I love you guys and get busy building a better hiking canyon body and you will have a better adventure. Love you guys. Coach Arnie's contact information, as always, is in the show notes. The Rim to Rim Pack, the day pack designed for Grand Canyon hiking, but of course suitable for any day hike on the planet, is also available on our website. It is everything we dreamed a day pack could be, right down to the front pockets and pouches, so you can keep on moving. If you're in the market for a pack, we would be so grateful if you would consider it. That's at brightangeloutfitters.com. At Bright Angel Outfitters, we do it all for the love of the canyon and to help you have your best possible experience below the rim. All right, that's it for now. Thanks to Dr. Tom Myers and Ted Petrosky for throwing some shade with us today. My name is Brian Special, encouraging you, as always, to go hike the canyon. Take that first step, embrace the journey, and when you get there, whether it's for time goals or taking your time, just hike your own hike and enjoy all that is a place unlike any other on Earth, the majestic Grand Canyon. We'll see you next time on the Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show, presented by Bright Angel Outfitters.